Hey everybody, welcome to Sunday Tea Book episode 16. Mm -hmm. We are back. We're a couple minutes late, but no worry. We've got another great episode in store for you as we work our way through the ver a, ver a great variety of green tea. Hello, mm -hmm. Bruna on YouTube, and hello everybody on Instagram. Um, Got to work on the timing of it. We've been on Instagram a little bit longer than YouTube, just kind of staring at the screen, but that's all right. All <laughs> right, so here we are back with a, another Sunday tea book. This is where uh, first we should maybe, uh, since we're doing green tea. Mm -hmm. So um, today is another green tea session. Let's just introduce the tea we yeah, uh, I we are drinking, mm. and maybe you guys can share us exactly. what is in your cup. Yeah, what are so you guys? So we're brewing? having some uh, Dian Lu, right? That's right, Dian Lu pan fire. Uh huh. Do you want to show them the leaves? Yes, that? absolutely. Um, sorry, a little bit. Uh, so there we go. There is right. the dry leaf of the okay, Dian Lu. Yeah, the high tech uh, uh, in. <laughs> video I, insert here so I that I don't a little have rotation. to tilt it. I'll hold it up for the mm -hmm. Instagram folks right. if I can. Because uh, the, the guys on YouTube have a really high-tech reel, guys. So you guys want to pop over to YouTube to get the, the best experience. Now we're going to retrieve all the leaf I spilled on the laptop here. Awesome. So, yeah, so that's the dry leaf of the mm -hmm. Dian Lu Pan Fired. Um, I'm just going to get the We'll get water. the tea going. We're covering three... Uh, three teas today, but first I'm going to tell you a little bit about Sunday Tea Book and what it's all about. This is uh, an idea that we got from you guys, from you guys out there in YouTube and Instagram land, where we go over books, papers and articles that are full of great information, but originally written in uh, Chinese, very hard to access information. Mm -hmm. They may or may not be translated, and if they are translated, the translation maybe leaves a little bit or a lot to be desired. So what we do is we're going we're gonna to bring whatever document it is we're doing up on the screen and go over it, go over the document, and we'll translate it together. Um, and the reason this is amazing is because uh, over the last five years working with Jen and working on all this sort of confusion and obfuscation that surrounds Chinese tea, I've learned so much by going into some of the nitty-gritty details with her um, why things are named the way they are and etc. So I just think it's a really fun experience to share together. Also, sometimes I'm at a loss for a way to explain a concept that Jen is trying to explain and that's where you guys can jump in, share your comments, ask us any questions in the chat. We'll keep up with them and keep, uh, keep track of them, all right? So um, that is what Sunday Tea Book is and we love it. It's been so exciting. I can't believe we did 16. This yeah. is the 16 episode. Relatively on like time. Four years, uh, the, not four years. <laughs> Felt like four years, but only four months. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the book we're using is called China Tea Book, written by my mom, Jian Li Wu. And now we're moving into the green tea session. We're going through many uh, famous, or not so famous green teas. And mm -hmm. uh, last week we did the like, probably the most, the most famous, famous, pretty much green ubiquitous teas. green tea. Right, like a Dragon Well, Longjing, mm -hmm. and uh, Bi Luo Chun. Mm -hmm. This week we're diving into three teas, and uh, you will see a little. Uh, format transformation in the book as it gets mm -hmm. into introduce people more cheese without going too much at length. Right, right. So again, the, this book, China Tea, written by Jian Li Wu, Jen's mom, our tea consultant, is already translated. So what I'll be doing is I'll be bringing up the uh, part that we're looking at right on the screen. So you guys out there in Instagram land, if you want to follow along, hop on over to YouTube. We're not going to stay on the Instagram the whole time. We're going to end actually very shortly on Instagram. So hop on over to our YouTube channel and um, I'm going to read out the section and we're going to go through it. I'm going to give you my impression of what I think it meant. Jen's going to um, fix anything that was either totally missed or if the, just because the, sometimes the translation's a bit wonky, it's very easy to misunderstand the, what's trying to be conveyed. Um, and what's even um, what's something we've been doing lately is look at down below in the description on YouTube you'll find a link to the finished translation I think it would be even more enriching even more valuable to you guys if you follow along with that translation because then you'll be able to see uh, our the final wording that we chose for that information mm -hmm. so guys um, if you're new around here if you're new to the channel and you love it please click that subscribe button and the notify bell so you'll know whenever we go live that way you don't have to worry if we're a little 10 minutes late here or there right you'll get the little bing and uh, yeah and all the Instagram folks will see you guys on the YouTube side okay mm -hmm. so bye bye for now and hello I didn't say hello to all of you guys but we'll see you on the YouTube side hopefully bye bye dun, 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 dun.
Well, Josh is uh, having some uh, Juye Qing. Juye Qing. Yeah, it's a green tea from Sichuan. Mm. Make some. Oh, that should be really delicious and it, beautiful. Mm, it rang a bell. Yeah. I thought maybe it, we had that in Sichuan or something. Cause and yeah. And Yan Yan is having some 2001 XY. What does XY mean? XY Yi Wu Gu Shu Shu Pu. 2001 XY. I'm not sure. Maybe XU? Y is close to U. Su Su Y is U. Because it's close to the keyboard. I don't know if it's a typo. So yeah, no, Yan. I don't think it's a typo. It's a short maybe it's form a for something. Thing. Could be. Ah, burn myself. <laughs> And uh, Dee's first of says hello, hello there, and hello Cindy. Hello, Good to Cindy. see you again. I was on a, a meetup with Cindy recently. Mm, I'm gonna plug that app. We, Cindy and I, are part of a beta test group for a really cool app for if you're into timing your tea or cataloging your tea. It's called My Tea Pal. So check that out in the Apple and Android play, uh, app stores. Is it released? Not quite. Very soon. Like um, Vincent's going to release that in the next week or two. So keep your eyes open for that. And if you're, um, you know, yeah, keep your eyes open. It's a, I found it was a really fantastic app. As simple or as complex and detailed as you want to be. Very nice balance of the two. Mm, it's nice. All right, let's have a smell. Oh, I love that pan-fired, lovely food. Right? <laughs> it's really refreshing. We just had a big uh, breakfast. Mm, so, so we could survive through the whole life. <laughs> oh, I love that floral with the little, the little jungly Yunnan smell is still in there. That has, little, right, right. Mm, really lovely. All right, I'm just going to organize my notes. That's how I keep track of all my stuff here. And I think, guys, I'm going to dive in. Oh, Cindy, good to see you. The name of the app is My Tea Pal. That's my right. Yeah, pal, good yes. to write it down for them so it's Thank easier you. to search. Thanks, Cindy. And I'm going to head on over to the book. Yes, let's get started. Maybe I was thinking maybe today we can do like a one section rather than read the whole thing. Yeah, sounds good. I'll do like maybe the first two pairs mm -hmm. for the first little section. All right, guys, so here is China Tea up on your screen. And um, let me get my controller ready. So we'll just have a quick look in the table of contents at where we're at. We've come a long way, all the way through um, almost, yeah, we're into section two now. So last week, as we mentioned, we looked at uh, Bilo Chun, Green Spiral, as it's called here, and uh, uh, Long Jim, Sihu Long Jim. Today, we're gonna be looking at these three eyes. Um, so let's get on with the first T, Yellow Mountain Fuzz Tip. Okay, so brewing difficulty. I just love this little guide. Brewing difficulty, easy to learn, difficulty, three stars. And brew taste, tea tasting season, summer. It's quite hot. One of the things I love about Chinese tea tasting cups is the size. They're small enough that even if it's super hot, you can just haul a little bit off the top aerate it, and get a little sip right away. All right. There are many good tea, there are many good tea in the famous mountains of South. Among them, the mountain of Anhui is the best. High mountain tea produce better tea. Yellow Mountain Fuzz Tip is originated from the Yellow Mountain of Anhui province, and it is mainly located around the Yugu Temple, Songgu Nunnery, Diaoqiao Nunnery, and Qi, Qi Guang Pavilion of Tao Huang Mountain. There, the woods are tall and thick, shorter sunshine, more clouds, best natural conditions. Tea is grown to be best quality among the clouds and be moistened without the destroy of hot summer and cold winter. Summer Yellow Mountain Fuzz Tip is the best of all. It is thin and curly in shape, just like the gold sparrow tongue with silver tips. The golden yew leaf and ivory color is the characteristic makes it different from other tea. Yew leaf means the little leaf over winter and under the one bud leaf. Ivory color refers to the top fuzz tip that looks like brightless but has a little white, yellow and green. One who has been on top of the yellow mountain after drinking the tea, he seems like to appreciate the world wonders again. Although has not been, who can also enjoy from the beautiful scenery. Okay, so we'll stop there and just go back and kind of figure out what just happened here. 
Mm. All right. All、oh, right. I learned that from you. All、oh, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's all the bad things you learn from me. I feel、oh. a little bit guilty. No. All、oh, right. The <laughs> after that, I just cannot continue sentences. Anyway. So, okay, so the first paragraph, I really found that was pretty straight up, right?、Um, I think it's means, actually losing the what. Well, it for me, it, it said that Anhui Mountain makes the best tea, right? And there's lots of other famous mountains, right? Uh, no.、Oh. The concept is、uh, saying, right?、Uh, usually, the famous mountain in the south produce the famous teas,、mm-hmm. and among those mountains, um,、uh, like basically this uh. Uh, mountains in Anhui Province are like a good example. Means uh, they uh, mountains in Anhui produce a lot of famous teas. Oh, okay.、It's, because it says the best, it really feels like um,、oh. um, it's it means the most number. Okay, the so、best. there's many mountains in the south that make famous teas,、mm-hmm. but if you go to Anhui. There's tons of mountains making famous teas. Yeah, famous to- mountain make famous teas. Got it. Okay. And yeah. Okay, so yeah, that was confusing. This phenomenon is more obvious in Anhui.、Province. Right, right. It seemed totally understandable, right? It seems simply that Anhui、right. Mount. Anhui, Anhui Mo- is a province. Yeah. Just wanna. That province makes the best teas. Those mountains make the best teas, but it's actually they have the most number of famous teas coming、yes. out of that province. Yes, it's talking about a phenomena,、mm. and this phenomena is well seen in Anhui province. That's cool. That's the right.、Stuff. Okay, I think that's clearer then. That was really those are those ones really throw me off because I really because felt like, the, the, it makes the, sense. In yeah, English, totally makes sense. There's not much of a yes, yeah, absolutely. So in the second、um, section here, high mountains produce better tea.、Um, right over here,、uh, the first paragraph was I think also pretty fine. Hopefully, there's no more little traps in here.、Um, It come the Yellow Mountain Fuzz Tip, or let's just get the name just in case people are wondering what this is. If they're more familiar with the pinyin name, I、uh, Huangshan Mao Feng is the、um, yes. pinyin tea, right? So、yes. Huangshan Mao Feng. So origin- Huangshan is a location.、Mm-hmm. It's a, a, a Yellow Mountain, Yellow Mountains, if you want to translate. But it's Huangshan.、Mm-hmm. Uh, Mao Feng is a kind of tea. Right. So, okay. Yeah. Which here they they decide to call fuzz tip, which is a little bit cute.、Um, anyway, so it originates in Anhui Province.、Um, it's around a bunch of temples, which is really cool. It's really fun when we visit Tea Mountains. We often、uh, it's kind of you you're there, so you don't want to miss out on these temples, and they're really、mm-hmm. sort of magical places. Yeah, all the early time, like ancient times, there's a lot of monk and Taoist people who plan those kind of thing.、Mm. Then. You know, including other farmers and stuff. Cool. So this is a part that it was easy to understand, but I think it's pretty interesting for people who are into tea. There, the woods are tall and thick. Okay, so we get the idea that it's kind of a forest, a forested area.、Um, less sunshine, I guess, because it's a forest, right? You've got this cover、mm-hmm. of a canopy. More clouds. Best natural conditions.、Um, I just. This isn't really in the book, but I thought it was interesting to point out that when you see those gorgeous pictures of tea mountains with rows and rows and rows and rows of tea and nothing else on the mountain, this is what this is saying: is this is that's not a great condition for tea. They would like to be under. It's an、uh, industrial practice mm, to mm. make that a more practical, more but it's not yield, necessarily、right? the ideal、yeah. situation for tea It, growing. It's also pretty pictures. What is, you once said? Well,、like、it depends the, on how you think. What is pretty? True, true. Yeah, but、uh, um, yeah. I just wanted to say that you once said if you have trouble seeing the tea bush in the garden, pretty great garden. No, that's the pinnacle bar garden. Right. Because it increases every cost. So true. true. It's a、uh, hard. I'm uh,、mm. I'm not saying that all、oh, those are bad. It's、right. just which aspect are you. Uh, leaning towards the production or quality, right? Right. right. That,、uh, and always I, playing with the balance too. Yeah, I just want to. I'm just a curious myself, like a nunnery. Is that a? Yeah. In our final translation, I noticed you chose. You just stuck with the word temple, and I didn't change it back. I think it, is nunnery really literally for. It's the female, female monk. monk. Yes, it's、Has、correct. It's actually、right? a really accurate. 
like in this case, the book has a very accurate translation, but I don't、mm -hmm. think the extra information adds. I think Temple works, right? Uh, no, actually, first、oh. it's not necessarily true because a lot of places change names and stuff. Though、mm. a lot of those uh, uh, change name recently, their old names are temples and、oh. stuff.、Mm. The, like you said, the reason I chose just temple because it's not a very, very like.、Uh, It's not necessary to be so accurate. Not、yeah. to mention, it's it wasn't、uh, truly the fact. I'm just、uh, mm. wondering if it is the case as nunnery as a strictly yeah female. To be honest, I'm not even sure if that's a Catholic、right. concept or if it's if it's general for any female sort of religious. Oh, nunnery convent is also the word convent.、Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, maybe you guys can help、too. us out. What's the difference between <laughs> nunnery, convent, and do those、right. apply only to Catholicism, or are are they broader terms that apply to any、right. just gender separated to, religious? To learn that, yeah, yeah, just for fun. But again,、right. I don't think it changes the 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 purpose here is just to kind of get the idea of where this mountain is. Yeah,、so、I think and、works. continue on that sentence. I kind of wanna.、Uh, we talked about it、uh, last week,、uh, talking about mountains vis-a-vis -vis mount mount something mountain something. Mountain range and mountains. Yeah. yeah so so Huangshan Yellow,、uh, Huangshan is a mountain range kind of. There's、mm. many mountains. Well,、right. here you will see the, on the text it says Taohua Mountain.、Mm. So I put that as the Mount Taohua as we discussed last week.、Mm -hmm. That is more specific to one peak, and、right. this is the situation. So all those temples are located. On a peak, on Mount Taohua. Ta yeah, Taohua. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Taohua means a peach blossom. Oh, cool. Hmm. Peach blossom mountain. Kind of. Yeah. Nice. All right. So that covers that paragraph.、Mm -hmm. The、um, next paragraph down here,、um, I did have some trouble with it.、Um, so、um, Huangshan Mao Feng is the best of all, thin and curly. That's all good. But the golden yew leaf and ivory color、mm. is, yes. is what makes it different. So the, this yew leaf was a new, was kind of an interesting concept for me, and it, it、yeah. looks like what they're saying is that that is because this one I wasn't sure of. I wanted to double check. Is this sounds like last season's leaf,、mm -hmm. which is obviously underneath the new season's bud and one leaf.、Mm -hmm. So you've got a total of sort of three things: a bud、mm -hmm. and two leaf, and one of them is this yew leaf, this golden yew leaf. And、um, and I guess that's a characteristic that makes it different. And I think it, later on we find out this actually makes it a super high end、um, Huangshan Mao Feng、mm -hmm. or a really high end. And then the ivory was interesting too. The ivory color. I was wondering if they're using ivory in the sense that it's off white, which is technically what ivory is, or is it? White, like you don't see many white teas in green tea, right? Is mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm. But it does have some. It has fuzz in the name, so that started to get me thinking. Is it like? Is it sort of fuzzy, like a Baihao Yinzhen, or is it a more of a yellowish fuzz or an、mm -hmm. off-white fuzz? It's not be, because of all those little confusing elements. It's not really clear what's going on there. Right. So as usual, the、uh, full translation, the finished translation, we posted.、Mm. Uh, Below、uh, the link is posted below the video. So if you want to just、uh, jump into the more clear version, because this paragraph does have a lot of confusion and a lot of things need to be explained. So、mm. feel free to click the link and、uh, read the finished ones, and maybe based on that one and with my、uh, explanation, I feel like you might have a better idea、right. rather than stuck with this kind of、uh, uh, messed up English. So.、Right. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. A, that's a good point. And this is a, a paragraph. It's a little bit、um, technical or stuff. There are some、mm. some、uh, ideas. Rather than going question by question,、right. I'm just gonna go and、uh, brush through the、okay. whole、yeah. paragraph. Sounds good. Okay. So the beginning is、uh, the first sentence. Kind of a talk about. So this whole paragraph is talking about pinnacle Huangshan Mao Feng. Mm. Uh, this is like uh, uh, so. It's meaning you are、oh, <laughs> at a certain point you are not gonna see it because、right. <laughs> it's, it's a, so extremely rare. We're talking that super is, high end here. Is the the best of the best? Right. What's the top of Mao Feng you could see is like this, which you won't see it on the market. So not even China, right? No way. 
not live in China, hard to see in China even. So yeah. there's no chance of, for us to see those kind of teas here at all. Uh, don't use this as Despite the... Despite our connections. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the price is not gonna work. Mm, right. So <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is don't use this paragraph as your standard Got when uh, searching for a good mouthful in the market. This is uh, not gonna work. Right, uh, that's a really good point. Right, and I think uh, the purpose of this paragraph just have a little expansion of the knowledge to know mm. what is the, you know, Mr. Perfect. Sure, it's always nice to know what is the top of the top. And right. Regardless, you know, we may never see a Lamborghini in our driveway either, but we love to look at pictures of Lamborghini. That kind right? of thing, yes. That's the gist of it. Mm. Uh, so first, uh, the first uh, sentence was talking about uh, the overall look of the the overall look of the dry leaf of this uh, kind of a pinnacle grade uh, Huangshan Maofeng. So it's uh, it's a kind of a slim and a flat mm -hmm. and curled, mm -hmm. and uh, it also mentioned keyword like a sparrow town, sparrows town, which we mentioned last week. That's it right. kind mm -hmm. of refers to uh, one bud, two leaf, barely open, right. uh, like the mini mouth of a sparrow. Right, that's a cute metaphor, I love that. <laughs> right, and uh, with um, fuzz, with a white fuzz, so you mm -hmm. will have some pale or grayish color, look at that, or silver mm -hmm. color. Right. Yeah, and then the next uh, section is talking, uh, breaking down a a little phrase of what top grade, like the pinnacle grade mouthphone look like to, into two elements. First is talking about a, a tea term called yu ye, fish leaf. Okay, yu ye. And second oh, part... Go. Right here where I highlighted already. Yes. Second part was talking about ivory or I use the word tusk in the uh, translation. Right. Okay, so let's talk about the first part. Yeah, what is that? It mentioned something like overwinter. Yes, those are the leaves from the last season that uh, stayed over winter. And okay. it's uh, really tiny. I think I actually talked about what it is in our previous life. We were drinking uh, top grade by Hao Yingzhen. I even plucked a few out and asked uh, you guys, how was the plucking standard? of this uh, right. uh, by Hao Yingzhen because for some people if you if they don't know this concept they feel like uh, oh by Hao Yingzhen was supposed to be bud and there's a leaf that's one bud one leaf but when it's yu ye it's not considered a leaf uh -huh. in the one one bud one leaf or one bud two leaf concept it's a separation right. so it grows below that one bud and one leaf right and um, that's desired why is that a desired? It because that leaf only has one, right? In one bud and one leaf. If you plucked it, it would never regrow. What it indicates is the fir very first pluck of the year. Oh, I was wondering if it may be because it overwintered had some special, bringing some special qualities to the flavor, which it may do. But also it's kind of like a little prover. It's a prover, it, right? yes, and it means it's early because old leaf, if it's later in the season, mm. they also fall off. Mm -hmm. So it means it's the first round of a plug. Because a tea right. plant, you know, like any plants, they sprout and you get the plant rested several days, so they sprout again. Right. But the, that one, say, if the first plug is March the 10th, right, it has the year. Then you let this garden rest a few days, March the say 15th, you can pluck again. In our consideration, it's still very early, but the March 15th plug wouldn't even have yet. Right. So right. what it means is the first plug and it's really early in the season. Right, got it. Oh, that's, got a, that's packed with information. That little leaf tells you so much. It's, and it's not only exists in, uh, Malphone it exists in all green tea. Okay. It's okay. a plant phenomenon. Right, the plant basically that's sort of like a different leaf because it's prepping for winter, just okay. like other trees and stuff have their little... And it's a tiny mini. Right. So right. Um, check out, I'll uh, see if I can put the link of that uh, uh, top grade by Hao Yingzhen brewing video. In that I have the leaves to demonstrate 
what exactly does right, Ria right. look like. Yeah, I remember that. And that's why that was our top grade uh, by Hao Yunjun because that was the first batch of the plug. Right. It's not the like the first uh, see. It's not the early season. It's the very first. Very first bud of spring. Right. right. Okay, and some and the Yu Ye also have that other names such as uh, tea bamboo, cha sun, or golden peas or golden leaf, jin pian. Those are all other like nicknames, but those are tea terms. Right, right. For right. that special leaf. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the yu leaf. Yu ye is the most used term. Right. Then we have the second uh, uh, aspect of a pinnacle. Uh, Huang Shan Mao Feng was just talking about its color. What is the color like? It's like uh, ivory. I think a tusk might be a better right. one because ivory, we often use ivory as think a... Of, oops, think of piano sorry. keys or something, right? Yeah, something really white mm. or because, you know, like just because ivory has been a color which refers to quite mm -hmm. white color. Or just a slight off-white, but still yeah, pretty bright. Yeah, but still pretty right, mm. white, but a tusk has a little more yellow implication, the mm. feeling. Right. It's just my feeling. I'm not sure if it's right. No, I think it's, I think you're right. Like I, I thought that's, when I read ivory, I thought, whoa, how, how, how white, white is, is this it? tea? And is right. it a confusing green tea or? Right. Mm. So, um, so I use tusk. What is the saying? I explained it later on that it's, uh, what was that? The translation says it was a uh, brightless, mm, but a oh. brightless. Yeah. What's brightless? It's not a word. I feel like something is it's wrong. Not, it's not right. Yeah. Right. It's so it's, an, yeah. it's not very, it doesn't have much of a sheen. It's not mm -hmm. very radiant or it doesn't have much luster. Okay. At the same time, it doesn't mean it's dull. Oh wow! Well, that should be. <laughs> it's yeah. tricky again. Like when we dive into each tea, you realize um, any standard for tea in general or green tea in general doesn't apply to everybody. Everybody has its own standard. Right, right. Like this one, the color is a little bit yellow, a little bit white, and a little bit of green. Right. <laughs> so it's kind of you know. Uh, so compared to like Longjing, we're talking about a yellowish right, green, yellow green, like a right. brown, brown rice color. This one has a little bit white in it mm -hmm. because of uh, how the, the fuzz, fuzz was right? demonstrated in there. So it's kind of a based on the description sounds doesn't like a very pretty tea. Yeah, that's right. It but, would remind me more of like a Bilo Chun, Chun kind of um, really delicious, but maybe not so much to look at. Yes, you would, uh, if you see the real one, you'd be like, oh, this looks like lint right? for Bilo Chun. <laughs> or for this one, just a little bit lackluster, a little bit mixed up, right? Yes, but at times, as uh, our aesthetic towards tea, uh, as the training goes and the see more, mm. you start to look like this is the prettiest uh, Huang Shan Mao Feng you could Right, because your mouth is anticipating what's coming. <laughs> right, right. It's a build up like that. Mm. And the last sentence basically is some, it's confusing in the translation. It's a Chinese kind of a way to say the, oh, yeah, this, this tea. If you never see, uh, if never drink it, you, this tea help you imagine that stunning view of Huang Shan. Or if you've been there, this will remind you of of that kind of experience. Right, it'll take you back. Yes. Which we often comment when we're sipping teas that we've been to It has place, that memory kind right? of thing, right? Memory yeah. like. Uh, and Huang, Huang Shan as the mountain in China, we have the saying says, uh, Huang Shan gui lai bu kan shan. After you return from Huang Shan, you don't want to see any other mountain because you've seen the top of the list. Oh, wow. That kind of thing. It's very, if you guys are Google the pictures and stuff, it's really... Breathtaking? Yes. Spectacular? Yes. Like mm. uh, different than North American style mountain. Right. It's a very different style. Google the pictures. <laughs> yeah, I know. I noticed that when, when you explained to me the, the geography of Chinese mountains and I tried to understand how isolating they are and how they can really cut off villages and... I think about BC, I think about the Rockies in the States or even the Appalachians. And then when I got there, I'm like, oh, this is totally different. Mm. This is totally the density 
of these, they're not giant rocky 14,000, 15,000 feet mountains, but there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these little mountains everywhere. It's an yeah. incredible landscape. But Huangshan is high and it's very steep. Ah, very which, like those ink drawings you see, right? Yeah, it's almost like an avatar. Avatar, those ones. avatar, right, avatar, right. almost like those kind of thing. Wow. And it's in the south, so it has that misty and also uh, the 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 green grows on top. It wow. uh, look like a uh, you know heaven, like not right. that kind of heaven, but the you misty know, like, surrounding. Yeah, really for does Chinese, great. I feel like a lot of uh, gods will live there. It's right. a good location. Mm. <laughs> Good location. All right, so I'm gonna dive into See the next. See what people were saying. Yeah, let's have a so little X, check. So XY supposes to be some label. Oh, cool. And okay, so it Josh. Be from somebody whose name is you being. Why? Oh, All right. Okay. Right. Thanks. So, thanks, Jan. Yeah. And Josh says a uh, nunnery is for female monk. Equivalence, yeah, Equivalence. that's kind of what I was thinking. Right, right. Monastery is for male monks, so nunnery is frequently used for Buddhism as well if there is a female enclave equivalent to a monastery. Okay, so that's what mm. she was doing there. Um, and uh, proofer, I looked it up. Proofer, I didn't see what that's she's. Oh, I think we asked a question. And now I forget the question. Oh, darn. Desversified, we can't remember what we asked, but we looked something Sorry. up. So now, if you could remind us what we asked, we'll, uh, we'll anyway, I'll look either way, up thank after. you. Proofer, is that, uh, was that about for editing? Anyway, mm. I'm going to, um, I'm going to come back to the book while we wait for that answer and get on with the next couple sections. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just cover these two sections and Dr. T Q and A. I love that section. I want to I want to make a little graphic to introduce Dr. T Q and A in the future. Anyway, here. Oh, oh, the hat. Oh yeah, something like that. Yeah. With glasses, round glasses. So he looked really smart, doctor. All right, here we go. Appreciation always before drinking. Features of dry tea. Top grade yellow mountain fuzz tip is slimy and flat. Looks like the sparrow tongue with a golden yew leaf, strong bud, even, and more tips. Enjoying while tasting, Yellow Mountain Fuzz Tip has a strong taste of freshness, mellow and sweet aftertaste. Its soup is bright and clear. Dr. T, Q&A. Okay, I just realized I forgot to mention one thing. Oh. Okay, the, the, in, in the, the previous book, section? Yes, in paragraph two of the first okay. Look stuff, at how I highlighted it, that. it doesn't matter because this book didn't translate it. Oh gosh! The, uh, the first sentence was uh, the pinnacle Huangshan Maofeng is like uh, the top of the top grid among Maofengs. So I just want to point out uh, Maofeng. Sometimes people feel like if we talk about Maofeng, it means Huangshan Maofeng. No, uh, mm. not at all. There are many Maofengs, and in some places, if they produce very low end teas, they also call that Maofeng. Right. So it's a uh, it's a phenomenon in China because teas comes from the tea farmers, the producers, the 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 people's life. It doesn't come from lab, so it doesn't always strictly fit in one thing. You know, it's not just scientifically named or systematically right, named. Right. It comes from the bottom. So you would have people from different regions call uh, a tea the same name, but there are different teas. Right. So it happens a lot. Sure. And it's totally uh, ground up. The farmers in that village yes. in that area have their little culture of tea. That's yes. what they call their tea. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And in the case, what you're saying is Malfeng, we can, everybody's probably noticed it's all over the, like you see these Malfeng all over the place, not yes. necessarily yes. Huangshan Malfeng at all. Yes. Got it. Good. Good. That's an important point. All right. So back to Dr. T Q and A. All right. Why is it said that High Mountain produce better tea? This is because light is a prerequisite for the survival, survival of tea. The sunshine is not too strong or too weak. Tea has a special hobby on UV. In addition, along with the altitude, temperature and humidity are obvious changing. In, the, in a certain height of mountains, the abundant of rainfall and cloud, air humidity, diffuse light intensity, these are all beneficial to the growth of tea. So the high mountains produce better tea. Oh. All right. So. 
So this reservoir says it was because we're talking about the leaves. I guess the leaf was so called the, a prover. The, yeah, the little overwinter leaf might be called a prover. Oh. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna check, I'm gonna do a little homework okay. on that and see right, if uh, right, right. Cool. see if that fits. Yeah. So thank you very much for checking that for us. Yeah. So um, oh, I can't just go straight to my favorite part, Doctor T. I gotta start up here where I started reading, but the little. The little interrupt got me confused. So we're back here at appreciation always before drinking. So in that one, um, we have our, we already know that slimmy in this book just mm -hmm. means slim and flat, which you mentioned for the shape um, mm -hmm. before. Um, Sparrow tongue and golden yew leaf we talked about. I think the rest is, um, is good. Again, I think you already said enough that the feature of the tea, this yew leaf is not to be an expected feature of the tea. It's mm -hmm. the feature of the super top grade um, Hongshan Mao Feng. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this just the last word of this sentence means uh, more tips, right? Mm. It's not tips, it's a fuzz, like a meaning that's covered in tea right. fuzz. Yeah, but. I had a question mark beside tips in my notes too. I was like, what does that mean buds? Mm. Or, but there, it actually means fuzz. Mm -hmm. And again, that's captured in the Finnish translation. Because hao in Chinese can also mean the end. Ah, mm. Mm. so it was just a T word miss. Mm. All right, and enjoy while tasting was not bad. I pretty much gave that one a check mark. With the exception of uh, maybe talking about, I noticed they said the soup is bright and clear, mm -hmm. and there's also how. So I rem it re just reminded me like clear and fuzz are not mutually exclusive. Right? Yes, you can have that shimmering, almost like glitter, the little trichomes, the fuzz floating in your ultra clear liquor. Mm. Look, almost I, we had um, a tea. It was a trying to remember the name. I think it was a Bai Hao Yin Jen and it was just like the, the liquor was super clear, um, barely off clear to the yellow side liquor, barely, mm -hmm. but it looked like there was glitter in it. It was so pretty with the fuzz. Right. So I just wanted to point out that a fuzzy tea can still have clear liquor. Um, yes, yes. It's different than cloudy. Mm. Mm. That's a good one. And Dr. T Q and A. So hobby Finally on your part. Do you want to say that again? Right, Dr. T Q and A. So special T has a special hobby on UV. I can't get a so the up until there, right? Right. Um, sun, T needs sun. It's a plant. No mm -hmm. big no big leap there. Yeah. Not too strong or weak. Has a special hobby on UV is well, like no I have no idea what's trying to be conveyed there. It's kind of a rephrasing the previous one in a more of a you know human kind of a way to say they have special taste which means that it cannot be too much it cannot be too little oh okay it needs you know, some so there's a that sweet spot and that's got you. what they got like you. okay they're not a, they don't just want bold full sun there's mm -hmm. a, there's and too little even sun. when it says full sun it's different i was gonna mention like if you garden that's what i noticed this year is i plant some uh veggies from my hometown uh, the 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 hyacinth beans, the purple. Oh, the purple beans are called hyacinth beans. Yes. Oh, super delicious. Yes, and I look <laughs> it up in the summer. Like it asked for full sum, and we had a really great summer. Mm -hmm. However, it just doesn't produce flowers and stuff. Then mm -hmm. with a little bit more digging, I realized that even though this plant loves full sum, it loves short sunlight. That was something that I never thought of before. Oh, full sun, but not eight hours of it. Yes, because ah. Canada here is like a, what the five to nine kind of a summer, right. while in my hometown it's a pretty steady, you know, five to five. Right. You know, five right. to six. That's right. pretty much it for the. the there is a difference ah. in terms of lands and how right. planned you right. are. Yeah. Hours matter, right? It's quite interesting. I I never thought a full sun could have a a length difference before so right no it makes sense and, and just while we're on the topic of the garden i know it's not related but i got to just shout out to everybody what a great job she did an amazing job we were of course a lot of people got into gardening because of the covid lockdown and all that jazz she's been gardening for a few years but this year she totally several levels up um, just rotating stuff starting things from seed we were harvesting bok choy tom hao 
Kong Ching Chai. Uh, we, we barely bought any Joe leafy Thai. greens in uh, grocery this summer, so That's I'm right. super happy no, about that. No, she did a great job. And tomatoes. tastes way better. Yeah, tastes way now better. I'm really scared about going back to the grocery store because everything will taste really um, chewy and old. It was so fresh and crispy. So anyway, that's my public shout out to your amazing work on the garden since you mentioned it. Right. Okay, cool. Um, what else in the Dr. T Q&A? Um, um, in a certain height of mountains. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that means, I'm not sure, but so if you read the rest of it, it seems to make sense and it, with the altitude temperature in addition with the altitude, temperature and humidity change with the height. So those you want to get the, uh, as you go up, right? You want um, a cooler, a little bit cooler temperature with some humidity, which is different when it's cool than when it's super hot and humid, right? And in a certain height of mountains, I think that means like there's, a, there's just that sweet spot altitude. You don't want that super high on the mountain. You don't want that on the plane. Yes, right? I was, okay. yes, you totally nail that. It's very, uh, there's a, some certain um, misunderstanding because when people talk about um, high mountains and stuff, people think the higher the better. Mm. It's, not the, it's not true with the tea. And um, right. uh, different cultivars, they have their different tolerance to different situations. Right, right. It's just in general, it needs some elevation. You know, a couple of meter, a hundred meters and stuff. And uh, the ideal situation, we have a saying, you know, the ideal situation, the mountain, uh, the location in the mountain for tea plants are, you want a hat, you want a belt. The hat means you don't want, <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of metaphors when we say right, things. Really awesome. Yeah, so uh, you don't want to be on the top of the mountain. That's direct, uh, direct, uh, Sunlight. Right, and like we said, probably full the full brunt of the day. Yeah, you could even be out of the clouds or stuff. Usually, right. the the clouds and the mist is mostly around the uh, middle, like uh, say right, the, the shoulder or the chest area of the mountain, right? right? Not right. the top. And you want the belt. What is belt? It's a river. It's have little mountain streams, so, so you have sufficient uh, right. water for okay. it. Yeah, so it's not necessarily like ideally where the so highest. The, so the hat's top. the top of the mountain, the belt are the streams and rivers that kind of trickle Absolutely. down ideally through the tea bushes and yeah. watering them. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Sometimes you can taste that bitterness if the tea is right on the top of the mountain. Right on. Well, no, that would be sad, but. All right, let's head over to the um, comments and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. So proofer, yes, that's really cool. Thank you for looking that up again. And yeah. Cindy says, really good point about the difference of full sun in different latitudes. Yeah, mm. we, you learned that through direct experience, right? So cool. It's very, it's a, a certain point you really, I really felt like to doing gardening helped me understand tea more. You can, uh, all mm. times, because I often, when I just get into tea, before I was more in, in the tea farm, I was like, oh, what's the cultivar difference? How do they look different? So I have a bunch of leaves and compare. Yes, if I compare, I can recognize them. They're different, but they never sink in. But if when I pluck tea for a day and then basically by the end of the day, any different cultivars, I can pick them up. Right. Like uh, I can, because I've seen enough. Right. That kind of uh, accumulated uh, uh, seeing the same thing over and over really yeah, helps yeah. the learning. Yeah, the difference really pops suddenly when it's you're like, hey, this is a little bit weird yes. shape or something. Yes, and mm. same with a plant, like a gardening is like a, one plant, they have different shapes, different looks mm. in different uh, condition, right? Summer, spring, autumn, they're different. Mm. Old times, I was like, why? How? how I right. often ask my mom, like, how could you look at the leaf and know this is a plug in summer? This is a plug in early yeah. spring. They I was look totally similar. baffled by that. Right? How could you, like, and sometimes you think this is, how could you know yeah. the culti cultivar difference just by looking at that? Mm -hmm. Well, and uh, why is the big leaf not from the big leaf cultivar? Because the small cultivar 
tea bushes also have mature leaf that could be pretty big right. and how do you tell those things right and how plant in stress their shapes of the leaves also changes how do you know those i had a lot of questions that i just feel like almost impossible for me to learn you feel like she's a magician almost like yes. it's a sort yes. of like magic that she can yes. figure out just pull out the leaf out of a guy one and say blah 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 yeah it's just midsummer like a... with some problem with bugs or right, something like right, that right, right? And uh, when I do gardening, I realize it's uh, first it's something we really need experience to know. Mm. On the other hand, it's not impossible to decode. Mm. And at the same time, I also realize how 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 hard it is to notice those. Like just mm -hmm. a bok choy, right? In the summer, when was it was direct that. sun, uh, the taste changes. The mm -hmm. leaf shape become really like long and yeah. rather than the rounded and yeah. the stand spaces like pretty those pretty radical difference in the exact right? same plant i noticed it too and i was right? and it does kind of get you in touch with okay these things really react to their environment in quite specific ways and it kind of starts to make sense how a farmer or a, somebody who's really experienced visiting the farms and tasting it in different times mm. can become familiar and that really that. reminds me to be more humble of what i know and right. what i don't know because uh, mm -hmm. in our one of our uh, business in china is those uh, uh it's more like a pinnacle teas especially when it comes to aged puar mm -hmm. vintage puar we help people get like when they wanted to invest the good money to buy right. the real ones how do they know the right from the fake the counterfeit from the real ones right. and stuff there are so many nuances yeah right what's yeah. the state of the leaves so there are lots of stuff to consider right. and you got to consider are those leaves plucking the, the prime time or were they stressed out that's why they taste like that like right always be cautious and um, just want to say that gardening is really helpful <laughs> yeah, it, it did open the eyes, and you're right about yeah. the humility aspect. I learn a bit about bok choy, but unfortunately, we can't grow tea here. And even if we could, you've got to kind of visit so many gardens like you and your mom have done, and I'm kind of getting there, where you start to see the actual cultivar in its environment, in action, mm. watching the harvest and plucking it to get really familiar with it. Right. That's a great point. Right. Let's head back to the comments. I yes. saw. Um, I saw Jan. Um, no, hang on. Cindy um, said she loves the hat and belt analogy. Yeah, it's a really beautiful metaphor, right? And even the mm. tip of the mountain even shape a little bit like those uh, plucking hats. Yeah. And Jan says, what is the best altitude for growing tea? Um, some Taiwan teas can be from 2,000 meters above sea level. Yeah, those are called a high mountain tea. So it's a, mm. they've, uh, it's a pretty recent new cultivar. Like, mm -hmm. you know, in the 20th century, they finally made that work. Usually, again, there's no simple best altitude for right. tea growing. Different, uh, uh, you know, uh, Regions, cultivars, right? uh, uh, varietals and uh, region, like you said, mm -hmm. is very different because if you're talking about a 2000 meter above sea, above sea level, it feels all oh, really high, mm -hmm. really stressed. But Yunnan is very high. So when you're go, Yunnan going on mountains, they're very like a two, three thousand above sea level. Mm -hmm. And they can grow, they're tropical. So the right. region also matters a lot. Right, temperature and humidity are different when you're on, at, right at sea level, like Taiwan mm -hmm. is an island mm -hmm. and surrounded by ocean or mm -hmm. in a jungle. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's no, I guess what you're saying is there's no like, oh, this is the altitude. Depends on the cultivar, depends on the region, depends on a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I remember in the article about uh, tea at the roof of the world, mm. um, I can't remember the, the gentleman's name who helped them select the bush for that, but that was his consideration. What is a bush that will grow here mm -hmm. and will be okay at this high altitude? Because yes. again, they were super high. Yes. Not even and on a mountain, right? They're on the plateau, but it's high. Yes. Right. And easy to get there too, mm -hmm. which because it's hard to get there. Mm -hmm. All right. Great question, Jan. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. And Cindy says, it's so great that Jianli's experience and knowledge is being passed along. Yes. Thank you mm. for for appreciating it and we uh, love to hear that because that is our mission to share Jen and Jian Li's mm -hmm. uh, knowledge on tea yeah. uh, with you guys. Awesome. I need a little music for that transition, I think. Oh, you I can did do that. that manually. 
Right. Oh, you mean sing it? Yeah. You like when I do a little? Guys, let me know if you like when I sing, <laughs> sing the transitions and sing the little. I'm going to become sort of like a, no, I shouldn't say that. Thomas Shu, right? I think his name is Thomas Shu. He, he has those really cute tea songs he sings at right. the World Tea Expo. That's a full so, song. You are just doing a... Well, I can write a full song. I've, I've got a uh, couple under my belt already. True. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go into Mung Ding Du. All right. <laughs> I like to pronounce Mung Ding with a little bit of a flair, so apologize. Oops, I hit a button by accident. Let me go back to the book. Oh, perfect. All right, so... Mengding Nu is produced in the Mengding Mountain of Mingtown in Sichuan Province. There has been producing tea since Si Han Dynasty, which is named by the Ganlu, the name of the Han Shuan Emperor's region. It is said that the artificial cultivation of tea is begun from the Western Han Dynasty when the Wu Lijian planted seven tea bushes on the Meng Mountain. So Wu is named of tea ancestors or do masters in respect. And I think I'm just going to scroll a bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to, that's kind of self-evident. And I think that's it here. So let's go back and just scroll down a little bit so you guys can see all of it or most of it. And, uh, okay. So I don't know about you guys, but I am not an expert in, uh, I'm getting better though, in Chinese history. Um, so I had to look up the Sihan dynasty and when I did look it up, I was, I was like, I got to share this with you guys. So the Sihan dynasty runs from, uh, 202 BC and I'm sorry, I don't know that what the new letters are for, they, they don't say BC and AD anymore, but I'm just going to use that. Okay. 202 BC to 220 AD uh, and my mouth, my jaw hit the floor. I was just like, Whoa, that is old. Um, just, yes. just because it's so, that's pretty profound. I think, uh, that is, uh, Sam wrong. Mm -hmm. Yes. Here is the difference. Okay. I think oh. you probably Google the Han dynasty. I, I think, uh, uh, again, double check on this, uh, Han dynasty it's runs about, uh, it's definitely Sihan. I, I checked because it, it told me the peak of Sihan too, but I might be, I might've okay. got my wires crossed like later. Okay, I might've because got confused. Uh, the reason I said is because Han dynasty is a long one. Right, so then right. we have the one early one we call Sihan, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. later one we call Donghan, East mm -hmm, and West. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. because the capital switched and the, the lineage of the emperor changed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, Double check on Xihan, that might be the full Han dynasty, okay, which but, is longer. Xihan was uh, like half -ish. But guys, the, my, my reason to bring it to you, oh. if I'm wrong or right, it doesn't matter. It's, it's really ancient. It's okay, just right, to point right. out how long tea, and of course, I'm pretty sure the tea didn't look anything like uh, the, this would be uh, Gan Lu, I think, right? Meng mm. Ming Du mm. would be a tea called Gan Lu. Wouldn't look anything back then like it looks today, but just yes. that they had it in their culture, in their in their um, daily life is just to me like that's mind boggling. That's really helps me understand how this leaf and this beverage is just intertwined with the, their culture. I just found that astonishing and uh, right. give me a pretty deep like appreciation. Then we have, so, okay, I just wanted to share that because right, right, I just right. find it's that so really amazing. Really old, I mean. Yeah, really darn old. Mm. Um, and then it's named by Gan Lu. So they mentioned that it, so it's produced in this dynasty named by the Gan Lu. So I, I don't know if that's a dude or of the, of the Han Shuan Emperor's region. I couldn't quite figure this out. Mm. Um, it's a very hard mm -hmm. <laughs> because of the way um, it's worded, right? Yes. Uh, remember in previous uh, episode, I mentioned about how the emperor, a Chinese emperor, have many ways to have many ways to refer to many one, names, right? Many, yeah, many right. names. Well, first Titles. we don't really call them by their name. So, like a Song Hui Zong, right? Mm. It's not uh, this emperor's name. Qianlong is also not his name, but a way to call them. Right. You know. So same with here. Han Xuan Di, uh, Han Xuan is not the name of this emperor. Han means he's from Han Dynasty. Xuan is the title or the the right. character. 
that uh, was given to him after he was dead. Okay. It was given by all the officials that evaluated his life and say, "Oh, you're pretty good." Xuan, <laughs> give you a net. So right, okay. So that was after, but we often known as Han Xuan Di. So when you hear this, you usually would know. Okay, that he's from Han Dynasty. That mm -hmm. gives you a time frame. Right. So that's pretty handy, actually. Rather than just call him John or Charles, you have no idea. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, and then Gan Lu is uh, on the on the title. It translated as a do, which. Uh, uh, in the in this word meaning, yes, it can be meaning do. It can mean do, but mm -hmm. uh, here it's the title of the year of wow. this emperor. So how we do that? Like uh, now we're we're twenty twenty, right? We right. recorded after Jesus twenty twenty. Like right. uh, I don't know how old time is uh, in the West. Uh, people mark date or stuff but in the east we mark it based on the emperors right. when this emperor get uh, first step on the throne he gave uh, a name to his era so here is right. gan lu okay. so if uh, you have uh, if you say gan lu 3 years it means the 3 years in this after he named that era yes so okay. it kind of uh, uh, also pinpoint the year we can translate this year into our current calendar to know oh that's uh, say oh, wow. uh, 200 BC or something like that Wow so that is uh, so that's the name of his uh, era and a uh, emperor could have one or multiple names okay of so, the time so basically the the Meng Ding Du that's understandable I think so the Gan Lu name though comes from the um, the era epoch it was it was the Gan Lu era mm. and that's how it got its name yes okay so that's a lot and it that wasn't that wasn't quite obvious at all I think that's a really cool yes, thing it and got it, me really nervous I get really hot when no, I'm trying you did a to great explain job. this and, kind and of we, thing we did our best to explain that real well in the yeah to the, simplify it simplify. just means it's a, a, a time it's from that epoch yes right so that's that's actually a little bit cooler than the straight translation do, right? right. It's actually like give you a historic relevance. Yeah. And then uh, moving on, we um. And then it talks about uh, this is where cultivation began, and uh, mm -hmm. is began from the Western or by the Western dynasty because it's switched now suddenly. We went from Sihan to. Uh, Oh no, that is Sihan. This is yes. where it began for the Western Dynasty. But all all I wanted huh. to say about this, it's it's pretty clear, I think, because somebody Li Jen, this guy Li, Wu Li Jen, yeah. planted these seven bushes, and then I immediately remember our visit to the garden. Yes, we were yes. at this actual spot on Meng Dingshan. Yeah, and um, there's still seven bushes there. They are not the same bushes, obviously. Yeah, yeah, they don't live that long. But even the producer who we were working with when we were on that visit, he mm -hmm. told us that he was part of the team mm -hmm. who helped to recultivate, like replant those bushes and set them up, right? So mm -hmm. really kind of uh, pro probably an honor for him to be asked to do that and such a nice thing to see those garden with the lions and stuff. Was it honor or hard work for him? I don't know. It's just a job. Because okay. <laughs> the purpose nowadays to have those are for tourists, isn't it? Like to say, yeah, oh, yeah. that's the thing. They have to go to the mountain, like a really forest part of the mountain, to look for those uh, uh, a really old. Yeah, pretty bushes. scraggly, yeah, but old, yeah. and can make the trip and all that. So yeah. pretty, pretty cool job and pretty cool spot to be that has this kind of history. For me, it was really, um, really kind of awesome and fun. And we have a video about that. I think it's either going to be linked. It is linked in the description down below or I will put it there because right, it's right. a really fun um, video. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. that's all I had in that area. I think it's Wu is the name of tea ancestors or do master in respect. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the Wu, Wu Li Jian. Mm -hmm. He's got a statue there too, right? There's a statue yes. of him at that place. So it was the earliest uh, recorded um, like a recorded on text that uh, mm. planting and stuff right. but uh, with the science and a little bit uh, analysis uh, the early ones are considering more in the Yunnan but they don't have a written language right, right. so uh, there is the difference in terms right. of the earliest cultivation sure and also um, 
Wu Li Zhen is a Taoist guy. Oh, cool. Yeah, this is a, this is his uh, uh, his uh, yeah Taoism. And you can see the religion and tea relationship. Mm. And also now, if you go to Sichuan, you will hear a lot of uh, legends, uh, stories about girls and uh, him and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, we like to make stories and legends. But to your first point, which was the um, about the um, not Wu Li Zhen, but oh, but cultivation, right? About the okay, this is the oldest recorded cultivation versus now with some scientific study we see maybe that was in Yunnan we can kind of get enough data to prove there was some there yeah genetically the transformation of the data right was in the in end Yunnan. like um, I find sometimes those things turn into a little bit of like well where was it first where and it I, I'm not saying it doesn't matter scientifically I think those are great endeavors to pursue but as a tea drinker I think those are both really in, just really interesting things like yeah thing, one on. is more like a science one is right. a culture like uh, it's not mm -hmm. a which one is above which one it's just right. both an interesting thing and both of them show the depth of tea embedded in the culture for so long I still find that like uh, I still can reflect on that for a long time before it really sinks in just that m amount of time right all right let's head over to the uh, comments here mm-hmm Sing, Phil, sing. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> Good one. Thank you, Cindy. So wait, I think I just jumped in the middle though. Full sun and different ladder. No, right. you're right. Oh, I was bang on. Oh, what was the section with all the teapots and teaware? Oh, good point. I kind of right. just cruised right over it, and I should just kind of mm. back up. We should a little just bit. mention that. I should always the... mention that. So basically, the, this section is a brewing section. Mm. It gets, it gets kind of down and dirty with how to brew, just like it did with Long Jin, just like it did with Bilo Chun. But we have uh, whole videos dedicated to uh, brewing green tea and brewing specific green teas even. So these yeah, sections... Because uh, we think it's better to demonstrate it on video exactly. rather than on images and stuff. Yeah. So, so we're going to gloss... We skip yeah. all the brewing things. Yeah. And, uh, Not all of the teas will have brewing sections, but yeah. when they do, we're just going to graze right over them. Thanks for mentioning that, Josh. I, right. I will mention that in the future. Every time I completely cruise over it right. and I can picture Josh like, wait, 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 I don't want to see that again. Don't go yet. So yeah, that's what's going that's on nice. there. And... Um, that you had scrolled past. Yes. Oh dear. Ha ha. I didn't realize we were going over Meng Ding Gan Lu today. I would have made some of that. Ha ha. I suppose uh, Zhu Ye Qing is still appropriate as a very verdant Sichuan green. Mm. Precisely. Totally mm. works. Totally works. And Cindy says, your description of the region makes me really want to do some tea traveling. Yes. For now, I'll be content with watching the video, but hopefully can make a trip to China someday. Yes, I hope you can too. It is well we feel the it. same for yeah, traveling. I cannot and wait to get back and get back on the yeah. road. All right, and heading back over to the book. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll come up with a better jingle for the guy one transition. Luan leaf. Okay, so it is also called uh, leaf tea, which is a kind of green tea. It is a famous historical tea and is one of the 10 classical famous tea. Luan leaf is the only one that has removed the stalk and bud. The special kinds from the, that from Luan city are under unique traditional processing to make the leaf as a sunflower seed. And I think that is literally it. There's just some notes about the shape, which are perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the first thing, leaf tea, uh, leaf tea, yeah. I or peas or something. We call that pian cha. It kind of give mm. us the shape. Means it's a thin piece kind of thing mm -hmm. rather than buds and stuff. So based on the shape of teas, especially green teas, there are many uh, shapes. Okay? Sure. Right? Like a, so, I mean, in terms of how to categorize teas, right? Uh, we talk about process and stuff like that. There are other ways. Right. This is one of the other ways. You can use the shape. Mm. So, uh, some, um, gua pian, that's called pian cha. Okay. Liu an gua pian. Uh, here is called uh, Liu an leaf. You will see Liu an, Lu an, both works. Right. The funny thing is, Lu an is supposed to be the correct one, but because uh, Liu is the number Liu pronunciation, 
Mm, so nice. mm. uh, many people just call that Liu Wan Gua Pian. Now the wrong pronunciation becomes the right pronunciation. Our dictionary, I heard, already changed it. Even though the local people were like, we're Lu An, not Liu. Okay? But uh, ah, that's so <laughs> officially long. changed. So basically, it's just the meme overtook the reality. Yes, because the Chinese character has multi, one same character, different pronunciation, like record or record, right? It has mm -hmm. different meanings and stuff. Like right. uh, Liu Bao Cha. We call that Liu Bao Cha, but the second character in location, the character should be Liu Pu Cha. That oh. character, when it's referring to geography, it should be pronounced uh, the, the other way. But because Poo. most Pu, yeah, <laughs> there are many locations using that pronunciation, but this is not widely known. So a lot of people use the most common pronunciation. So most people just call that Liu Bao Cha. Wow. That is really yeah. so similarly, Liu An is well, yeah. locals, it's Lu An. Yes. And it's the same character, but it's Lu. But yes. people see that and they think it's Liu. Yeah, because people don't never heard of that place right, and see right. that. Oh, that's a number one, two, three, four, five, six. That's right, a, right. Right. And it's mm -hmm. not a well known, well known, like a multi pronunciation word. So, right, right. Yeah. Anyway, so that's it. And wow, um, we would definitely uh, would have. I would have never noticed that. Um, like you, as a as a newcomer to tea, that's just a, a detail that is completely right. Not to mention you, most of Chinese uh, wouldn't. Right, uh, right. Otherwise, true. our dictionary wouldn't change. Right, darn. <laughs> so not fair to the Lu people. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day they wouldn't remember that either. You know. Yeah. A lot of time, a lot of things just need time. So um, you mentioned this is the only tea that only uses leaf. Yeah, they when they mentioned, I think which is a kind clear. of green tea. Yeah, leaf tea. It's not leaf tea doesn't jump out as a if I'm new to tea that it's only leaf. Like I can almost think it's just a short version of loose leaf tea, which all of these tea are. Mm. And then they mentioned though that it is the only one that is removed. It's the only one that is removed the stalk mm -hmm. and the bud. Mm -hmm. This is, I think, where they're trying to get at the point that we remove the stem and the bud. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, again, it's, it's a little bit not, I think the important thing about this tea is that it's, I think, the only green tea made entirely with mature leaf. Is that mm, maybe only yes. as strong, but yes. it's made with... Okay, the, the, the mm. reason I hesitate is about the mature leaf. People usually mm. have a misunderstanding that a mature leaf is a full ground. This is a leaf, right. but it's a young leaf. Right. Okay, it's a still green tea. We fully don't uncurl? Use, you have to fully uncurl. Right. However, local cultivars, first, uh, this phenomenon uh, this phenomena I'm about to talk about exists in a lot of tea cultivars but the local cultivar there has a higher rate of this phenomena which is okay. a young fully open leaf curl backwards oh, that okay. like kind of like that sort of mm. I mean. how should i do it like that right no like a, for oh, example if you are flat right right this is say this is the top of the mm. leaf this is the bottom it's like the side is like a pinky right, right. Or they the curl top. down, curl as down. If they would shed water or yes something. that's right. also a sign of young Oh. young tender leaf right so they don't use a mature leaf okay got it that so there is, is a, a minor difference right it's, just a f a, it's a, a leaf a, right a full leaf but a, young leaf mm, okay has to be young and tender it's still green tea like yeah. chinese oh well i'm glad we clarified tea. that and i still i still think this didn't quite capture that so it's important to no. know this is made with leaf and the um the it's interesting that the stem is removed a lot of um uh, like a not uh, not uh, like uh, literally remove. Uh, In reality, there are two ways to handle this, right? First, okay. only pluck the leaves. The second is pluck the whole thing. Then there's a second step of a si like uh, somebody right. to detach that so the 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 buds and stuff can be made into Huangshan Mao Feng or some other teas, right. and the leaf make into Liu An Gua Pian. All right, save so, you the trip. So uh, yeah, textbook wise, yeah, we we don't have stands. We remove stems and buds. Right. Uh, in reality, tea production, there are different ways of approaching got it, got this. Got it. Okay, so a little bit overly detailed maybe. Um, mm. But it's a leaf tea. That's the important takeaway here. Yes. And shaped like a 
sunflower seed. Yes, 瓜子，瓜片。Guapian. That's why it's a guapian. Yeah.、Mm, mm. If you talk to people, so about... for those that don't know, guapian is a, the ones you get in a package, a snack, the sunflower seed snack, right? You just pull them out of the shell and get rid of the shell and eat this, eat the seed. That's <laughs> guapian, and、yes. guapian is the tea. Yes. Sunflower pian. That's right. And、uh, I just want to quickly mention the structure of the book after Huangshan Maofeng and.、Uh, There was a brewing section, right? And Huangshan Mao is a little bit more、uh, a fuller kind of descript,、uh, description and stuff. And、mm. uh, you probably noticed that Meng Lin Gan Lu and Lu An Gua Pian are both、uh, shorter ones、yeah. with the really、up. simple. Uh, That's right. Keywords about shape, color, soup,、right. and flavor. No subtitles or whatever. Yes. So that's kind of the the way the book. Layouts of different teas without going dive into every single one of them. The、right. most famous ones get most attention.、Right. And how to brew the lesser ones? These ones are more like a introduce you. Get a you, touch on. Touch yes. On yes.、Mm. So、uh, the future ones will be all simple ones like these ones. Right for、and、the rest of the green tea section. Yes.、Mm. Yes. Till we move on to dark tea. Dark Coming tea. up. In December, folks, if、uh, we stay on schedule, which we plan to. Yes. All right, heading over. Let's、uh, check out the comments. Right. Unless there was anything else you wanted to mention, but that's a great point about the change of the structure as we get into. Because you said December, so I was calculating.、Uh, is that really December so yeah, far? Yeah, I, I laid it out in the schedule. That's the only way I know. I、okay. don't have that fast of a temporal we'll calendar mind.、Mm. So.、Um, Yeah, so here we are back at the、uh, comments. Oh, there's a lot. Good work, guys. Oh well, everything's good. We didn't break anything. We were going over Meng Ding Gan Lu. Okay, that's good.、Mm. Your description of the oh, Cindy says your description of the region. Okay, that's where we ended, right? How we wanted to travel. So Josh、right. says, oh, I see. But do those sections show the variation between different teas? I'm slightly curious to know if there are specific instructions for each tea. Well, you'll be happy to know that, yes, they do. <laughs> they do show there's the slight variations for those teas. Yes.、Um, and so do we on our video when we brew.、Uh, if we brew specifically、uh, Nong Jin or whatever, we have those variations captured. Yeah. And perhaps why each tea would have whichever set of particular instructions.、Mm. Yeah. Also, I love Luang Gua Pian. It's one of my absolute favorite green teas, just because it is so forgiving and delicious, and just kind of like the soul food slash comfort food of all green teas.、Mm. Really rich and、uh, juicy, like like flavor wise. I really like it.、Mm. Yes.、Um, I, oh, you know why? Because of the process.、Mm. Besides, as a leaf, the process is just really, you know, pan fried and high fire, and they have that la da hu, right? Big fire and really get that、uh, good.、Mm. I often recommend it for folks if they're just getting into tea and they want to try green tea because they heard that it's healthy or whatever, but they're like big coffee drinkers or more,、um, more into those heavy, bold, punch in the face flavors. I say, you know, maybe this is a green, a great green tea to start. It's no, and、um, it's it's not a punch in the face, but it's it's, it's also, obvious. So you don't have to try hard to detect. Exactly, exactly.、Mm -hmm. So、uh, then Cindy says, "You answer my question." So I was getting ready to type. It is the same as Luang Guapian. There、mm, you go.、Yes. Yeah, great. And Yan says the Chinese language is so interesting. It has so many layers, just like tea itself. Oh, you know it. <laughs>、yeah. You know it, buddy. And、um, and on in the language. Differences too. There's also a style difference of. I notice as a as a Western engineer, living with Chinese, we often I'm have, really loose. Yeah. Well, just really.、Um, there's a lot of. If the de, how to say this? It's not a wrong a wrong at all. Like, but as an as a Western engineer, sometimes I want everything precise, really precise, really delineated and clear. And whereas in Chinese it's clear if necessary, which is almost, which is often never, or often not very often. So they'll give you, they just say, oh, like that, or oh, this. So interesting. The, I'm still really bad with the time, like how the past form, that form, because we don't have that. Every,、mm. The verbs stay the same, so I'm still very bad. Yeah, really、those. hard. Yeah. 
So I agree with you on the Chinese language, 100%. Cindy says, I just want to say that every week you increase my enjoyment of tea drinking because you teach me, oh, that is to notice oh, my tea. So nice. I'm just thank overwhelmed you. by your words. So yeah, thank you. That is what we're hoping to bring to people uh, who mm. are interested in this stuff. And, and yes, it actually enriches the whole experience when you're brewing, you have something to kind of um, uh, latch onto and think about and, and reflect on. Mm. Like the time, that ancient stuff, when I brew, I'm just going to be on that for a while. Mm. And Josh says, sunflower seeds. I thought it was melon seed, like kugua. No, they have a different shape. Mm. Sorry. And because melon <laughs> seed are so much more round and full body. Mm. It's mm. just a shape thing though more, right? It's more of this shape thing. And if you talk to mm. the Chinese, just say guazi, we automatically think of a sunflower seeds. Mm. And I think that could be also right. why, and also the shape look like sunflower seeds. Mm. Mm. I mean, that was what I thought. Not sure. Ha. Mm. It's okay. And accidentally, Joe Kahai didn't mean full bodied like mouthfeel. Just meant like more full bodied silhouette profile. Ah. ah. Also, have to massively agree with Cindy. Ah, thank you, thank you, Josh. Thank you. Right back at you with my perfectly formed heart. <laughs> I form hard like that. Okay, this is a better. Yeah, that's her heart to you. What what is uh -huh. yours? Like this. I think they're both like pretty good. Like an apple. Good. Okay, okay. Not an apple. That's a heart. Oh. Okay, you can vote on which heart you think is better <laughs> down in the comments. We are wrapping up. This green tea has been super delicious throughout. Kept it's me. It's really uh, robust. Really robust. Kept my voice come from cracking for sure. Mm -hmm. Um. It's still going strong too. I'm really impressed. Only uh, only four grams is what I put there, uh, but really um, fresh with that hint of you can taste. It's made from puar cultivars, and you can kind of you can kind of get that little hint of the jungle. It does have that, right? Mm. It does have that. I love that. Mm. I love how robust it is. Like. Uh, you don't have to think too much when you brew this tea. Ah, uh, yeah. It almost is not like a long lasting like a uh, or right. or um, right. like a oolong because it's, it's still green tea process. But because of the cultivar, it really lasts a long time. Like oftentimes when we brew green tea, especially from this kind of mm. long uh, live sessions, I often feel like I need to prepare. Keep some backup leaf. Yes, mm. but this one I don't need to and this can still go. Yeah. After how many infusions? Yeah, I didn't yeah. keep track of that. Long live the tree. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So that is episode 16 of Sunday Tea Book. Thank you all for joining us. And thank you if you're watching the uh, recorded version for joining us. Any questions that weren't covered, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Mm -hmm. Please, uh, if you want to support the channel, give this video a thumbs up. And also what you can do is there is a link to the tea we brewed down below. There's a link to our blog. You can visit those and visit the site, pick up some tea and mm -hmm. to, uh, to support your habit and support the channel. We would greatly appreciate that. We greatly appreciate you guys who are here with us today yes. and all of your really kind words. Thank you so much. And we will see you. Oh, I always remember one thing right before I sign up what? Thursday at 7 PM Eastern. I'm doing, uh, I'm doing a talk, uh, again, a live talk, um, mm -hmm. exploring the world of Chinese tea. So join me again for a sort of, we're going to go over everything to do with Chinese tea in one 45 minute to an hour is my target session. Mm -hmm. I might go a bit over. I definitely won't be under. I talk mm -hmm. too much. Um, join me <laughs> for that. Um, it's going to be great. You guys, um, a lot of you guys here are experienced tea drinkers. I still think there's a lot to get out of that. So. Uh, join me there and uh, we will see you on the 22nd for that. And now, until next time, keep, keep steeping. I always have to look over here for this. I'll so, shake my hand forever to you. <laughs>